Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have another frequency counter and this time it's from XL Microwave. This brand you don't see too often. It's originally from uh, Oakland, California and I think the brand existed from 83 up to 2005 and they were, they were bought or taken over by uh, Pendulum. And if you think Pendulum, that company I have heard before, well, I think one of their most popular frequency counters they have is the CNT90. And the story with the CNT90 is a little bit confusing because it also is the Fluke uh, 6690, the Philips PM6690, the Tektronix 3000 series. And I have even seen pictures from a Fluke which says on the mainboard Pendulum. So it's probably all made in the same factory. The model I have here is the model 3030. It has two channels. The first channel goes up to 120 MHz and the second channel can go all the way up to 3 GHz. Well, what is so special about that meter here? Because I already showed you this one, the 3260, I think. This one goes up to 26 gigahertz. And it is like 12 digits. It had a lot. This one was almost brand new. I was very lucky to catch uh, this one. This one is clearly uh, newer. Then why I still wanted this one? Because this one, 26 gigahertz. This one, only three. Had a rough life. It's also not uh, working fully. But when we look here, look at the sticker. It has a rubidium standard inside. So these frequency counters are still very interesting because of the rubidium standards. And I did find a few on, uh, on eBay, but they are all around a thousand dollars. You can find them without the rubidium standard and then they are between 300 and 500. I found this one even below that. And it is because the second channel is not working, but because they confirmed the first channel was working, I still thought it would interesting just because of the standard. But it should at least work on the first channel, which is uh, up to 120 MHz. And maybe we can push that a little bit higher. But because of the rubidium standard, we should be able to have a resolution from 0.01 Hz, which is pretty cool. So let's have a quick look around the outside. What I want to do is power it on, measuring the power that it takes. So maybe we can see like with an oven when it is uh, start to stabilize that the power drops. I want to measure the oscillator output uh, on the frequency counter here. Then we can also see when it reaches exactly the 10 and how exactly is that because I'm not sure if you can even calibrate the rubidium standard or it is what it is. I have no experience with it. So let's see how good that still is. And I'm pretty sure that it still works because they confirmed that the first channel was working. So let's have a look. We can clearly see it is used, but I knew that of course. A uh, little bit of scratches here and there, stickers that we can maybe clean somehow. Uh, we have the BNC, the end connector. So the problem is in this channel, it's a pity because it can also do power measurements on the second channel, just like the 3260 I had. And you can have a proper readout. This is the one Mac, this is the 50 ohms. And of course, to measure the power, you need the 50 ohms. Um, we go around. You see already, I removed the screws because we have a look inside later. We look in the back here. It is the dash five, and that is because of the rubidium standard. Another sticker here. Yeah, external reference in. You probably don't need that, so they put the, I think some rubber on it. But we can measure the output. It is set to 220. I think it came from the UK, if I remember correct. GPIB option. You can. Uh, use external power also DC but I think because of the rubidium they say already here you need 18 to 28 volts and I think the other one could be lower but we need a bit more here it is quite long and that has to do also with the rubidium standard I needed more space look at the difference of the normal version last cali calibration in uh, 2018, so that has been a few years, and after that they probably just blow up the, the B channel. 
So we power it up. We have a look in the display here. Uh, we have here uh, the power meter to have a look how much it consumes. And I will have here a readout. It's connected to GPSDO. And we can have a look of the internal oscillator, the rubidium standard, when it is there. It uh, immediately powered on when I connected it because it is only a standby button that is of course to keep the oscillator running so it is immediately when you want to use it it works um, let me get a few more digits here and uh, let's go here we go power on we see it's using now uh, 50 watts the frequency is not there yet but it is getting there here it said the rubidium is unlocked so it's still looking we can see that it uh, went a little bit down and then it went a little bit up and then it went down again uh, but it is still not locked so we just wait this one dropped already a little bit because it was in 47 and now it is in uh, 37 so that's 10 watts slower and we see here now it is above the 10 so it is just trying to find this balance well that was less than three minutes and i say it takes about a 10 of course depends on the temperature i think in the room but here it's around 25 uh, celsius and when the unlock message uh, disappeared it immediately went to 10 spot on look at this and i'm comparing this to my gpsdo this is actually quite amazing so these are the full hertz this is already below the hertz let me add another digit this is crazy stable it's been switched on for um, 8 minutes they say in the manual you should wait at least 10 but we see here this is completely stable the 25 uh, watts what it is taking it's not even that much and uh, look at this compared to GPSDO this is rock rock salads and this is below the hertz here wow this is not what i expected at all i would expect okay it is a very stable oscillator but usually that doesn't mean that it is also spot on on the frequency you know if you have an ocxo you can still adjust that but here just out of the box i don't know how old it is it seems a little, little bit older than my 3260 so this one is maybe closer to the 90s than uh, 2005 that the other one uh, is but it is not only super super stable it is also spot on now i understand why people are so enthusiastic about these uh, rubidiums I am not sure the connector is uh, properly because now it works I need to have a look at the connector yeah there is a little bit of a bad contact in the connector but let's see if we can get more resolution look at that this is uh, 10 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay this is below a hertz we have one more because we have the rubidium standard yeah there it is pretty cool and this is compared again to the gpsdo and of course you usually have your last digit And look at that now it is spot spot on I don't know if there is a if something broke in the inside of the connector or the pins just loose wow I switched it back to this extra resolution look at this two zeros below the hertz this is pretty cool well we need to check the C channel so I will try that but they already told me it was not working
that is a little bit uh, weird. We don't see any readout. But I have now 4 volts peak peak. There is no readout. It says over. It doesn't say overload. I go to 5 volt. It says overload. I go to 6 and it says ooch. It doesn't like it. But it doesn't count. And that's a bit weird. The gate also is not going. So it does sense the signal because it knows there is overload or not. Only it doesn't. Uh, the gate is not going somehow. Power measurement. It doesn't read power, but somehow it does detect an overload. On the first channel or the connector, or it is really a sensitivity thing that, that this doesn't work uh, well. The second channel is really broken. Uh, weird enough, the overload circuit does work. So maybe they have a separate, just uh, a little rectifier bridge, and then when the DC comes above a certain level, you see overload, and then with another pin, they display a message on the display. But um, yeah, the prescaler doesn't seem to work. I have not a power uh, measurement, and the gate didn't work. So, but there is no service manual uh, available. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. Okay, clearly pity about the second channel. The first channel, I really need to have a look at the connector. Let's have a look inside. Maybe we can see some obvious things. If you, by the way, have this 3030 and you do have a service manual, I would be very, very happy if you can contact me. Because on the internet, I find nothing and I've been looking for it today. So, yeah, just uh, switch it off. It is still uh, a little bit warm. I think we used it like a half an hour. Now let's open it. I took all the screws out. They really try to make it close and all this really needs to connect. Now they are serious about the shielding. This seems like the GPIB board. So we need to be on the other side. Maybe we can see what year it was. Yeah, 95. I see here 95. Let me get a closer look. It's all 94, 95 the component, so it is uh, at least after that. We see, really see their own branding here, the XL Microwave. Funny thing, if you look uh, for it on Google, you find the uh, Philips uh, XL Air Fryer. <laughs> so it's really not that uh, known. So let's have a look at the bottom. Again, the shielding. Pretty well done. Wow, look at the import circuit completely closed. And here we have the rubidium standard. Pretty cool. I actually see an adjustment hole here, but clearly that is not needed. Oh, it gets quite hot. So after using it for half an hour, it becomes like 40 degrees. The power supply looks very nice. A lot of these coils, I think, just to make it more nice, the voltage. Just a transformer a rectifier here. And here it is. Yeah, creating many voltages, maybe some step-up converters. Yeah, I have no idea what voltages I need. So I also don't know if it's missing. We have here this, uh, I think it's 9-pin or 15-pin connector. You usually see that on these uh, Rubidium boards. And... From this block, we have one cable out, so that's the 10 megahertz out, clearly this one. Well, that worked. I'm not going to adjust it. It was fine. And where do all these go to come from? I do see here, we have here a setting for the overload, so that can be adjusted. We have a slope, an offset, 
but that are all measuring points. And here seems to be a pot. So we can have a look underneath here. I loosened all the screws. I need to get this. Oh, there it goes already. Ooh, that looks nice. That looks very nice. They made separate compartments. This looks like some proper quality. This is really one of the first uh, frequency counters that I see this professionally built. Okay, this looks pretty cool. We have here a mixer module, almost like they uh, mix the signal back. This is the C channel. So maybe, I'm not sure, this could be an oscillator. They mix it with this, then they mix it down. Here seems also some op amps, maybe a filter. And here we have the normal channel, so this is the lower frequency. So, yeah, I'm not sure what they do. I need the schematics, but I see some op amps here. It look like those amplifier. Even without the schematics, there are some simple things to check. I think this is a 5 volt regulator. Here we also have different voltage regulators. Um, in the back here I saw one. So these are things that I can already check without knowing uh, anything. And we have more uh, places where I can do that. Also, on this side, there is a lot more going on. I said, uh, yeah, it is the GPIB board. Well, that is the case. This is probably buffering. Here we have a national instruments uh, chip. But here we have already the operating system. This is a Z80 or a Z84. Here's some display controls. Here I see somewhere the 10 megahertz. Here I saw IF channel 1. So from the input, the channel 1. So here if I bend 1, here it says IF. So it is also doing some RF things here. So these are our spots I need to check. So after a good cleanup, it looks a lot better. All the old stickers are removed. And the display is nice and shining. I think it was a success. Even though I haven't got the frequency counter working on both channels, I still need to do a lot of debugging. I think it's still great, but because I have here a perfect Rubidium standard. So if my GPS DO fails, I just switch on this one. On the back, I get my 10 megas and I can run my whole lab. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.